and we do a dynamic contrast and if you can appreciate that this area is bright and it has absorbed the contrast. So this is a malignant uh, lesion. What else can we do? We can do a MR spectroscopy and in a MR spectroscopy of the prostate we have only two peaks that is a citrate and choline. Choline is the biomarker for malignancy. So in a case of CA prostate you would have a raised level of choline which is shown here in the red arrow and it is very accurate for diagnosing CA prostate. So you will say that eventually this patient is undergoing FNAC or biopsy. So why do you need to do these, these techniques? That is because you can guide the person who is doing the biopsy which area he has to target. Because even if they do multiple biopsies and go through only the benign area, it can still be missed. So therefore it can guide the uh, clinician who is doing the biopsy. This is another case. This is a female patient who presented with pain in the left uh, side of the pelvis two months ago and after that it gradually decreased. Now you can see that there is a lesion here on the left side. It's very homogeneous appearing. This is how it's seen in the sagittal and this is how it's seen in the axial. But there is a small cystic area in the anterior aspect of the lesion. So we are not sure whether it is benign or malignant. In diffusion, we can see that it's not dark on the ADC. So here it looks like it's benign. After giving contrast, there is a homogeneous enhancement in the coronal plane and in the sagittal plane. So how can we characterize it further? If we do a peak enhancement curve, we can see that there is a gradual enhancement and there is a plateau. So this is characteristic for a benign lesion. So that was a torsion ovary which corrected itself and that is where the pain was there two months ago and then there was no pain. Now dynamic contrast morphology is also very helpful. There was a patient with suspected vaginal mass and on contrast you can see that the lesion is already dark and that's because the lesion has enhanced but there is a rapid washout from the lesion and that is why it has become dark. So there is a rapid washout which suggests a malignant lesion. Dynamic contrast can also help us in evaluating such uh, pathologies where there is a CA endometrium with myometrial invasion and dynamic contrast helps us to be more sure. Now this was a very tricky case. This was a very young patient in his uh, uh, 20s and he had a swelling on the right side of the tongue. And it was it is very subtle on this image here. But let us do different sequences that bring out the lesion much better. You can see how large the lesion is over here. And on contrast, the lesion is well enhancing. But still it was little confusing whether this is benign or malignant. So we did a dynamic contrast and you can see that there is a rapid washing and there is a rapid washout. That means this is indicative of a malignant lesion. So what is the take home message? Firstly, whenever you are dealing with a more complicated case, it would be very good if you can talk with the radiologist before you send the patient to the scan. I will be very glad if you can talk with me too. And the radiologist can plan out the uh, scan better depending on the symptoms. So let us see what is the take home message. What all we have seen so far. Firstly we have seen the dynamic pituitary where we can diagnose almost like pinpoint lesions like the pituitary microadenoma. We saw this uh, ovarian lesion where the dynamic contrast the peak enhancement curve helped us to say that this is a benign lesion and this is how the morphology of the graph is. There is a rapid wash in, rapid wash out and that helps us to say that this is a malignant lesion and that can help us also in differentiating from infective lesions. And this was the, the, the C8 tongue case which we just saw. So it also depends on what kind of equipment you are doing all these scans on and this is one factor which has not been talked so often and that is homogeneity. There is a homogeneity of the magnetic field that matters a lot and only when you have a very homogeneous magnetic field or a good equipment you can do such scans better. 
Now over the time when we have done uh, so many scans for uh, patients with pain or with patients uh, who have some kind of disability, we always thought that whether an organization can do something for these uh, patients or can help out in reducing their pain or disability. So recently uh, we thought that it would be a good idea to start with a, a, a physiotherapy unit and we have going ahead with uh, what is called as a robotic visual rehabilitation or in short a robotic uh, physio. So this is an endeavor of Make in India and it is developed by IIT uh, individuals and uh, essentially the patients wouldn't feel the effort of the physiotherapy but rather they have visual stimuli so they will enjoy it. So we are starting with this very soon and uh, look forward to your cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Pasni, for that wonderful talk and excellent evening. I uh, request uh, Dr. Alpha Modi to say a few words and give the word of thanks. I just say it was a very smart lecture, Dr. Pasni. Thank you. It was really wonderful to know all the images which you sent um, affecting the living plate, so I just say that. Thanks. Thank you. I request all the chairpersons please come on the stage to participate of our. I request that you sit there with me to your hand of the camera and your total appreciation to all the chairpersons.